Familiar sound for the detainees at Guantanamo Bay. Hundreds of people, all men from more than 40 nations, brought halfway around the world to give up their secrets to American interrogators. The majority of Guantanamo Bay's 600 plus detainees make their home here inside Camp Delta, but what appears to be one solid institution is in fact more than one camp with different levels of security inside. For the detainees, life is a steady repetition of the mundane activities. Sleeping, eating, and praying alone in a six by eight foot cell, always watched by wary military police. In many ways, it's like a normal American jail. The one big difference is that we're not at the least bit interested in any kind of rehabilitation. We don't do that here. The mission here is intelligent. The men eat meals cooked to halal standards proper for their Muslim diets. They receive medical, dental, and psychological care at a detention hospital operated by military doctors and nurses. Our basic philosophy has always been since we started this that we would provide the detainees with the same level of care as we provide the troops that are attached to the JTF. Good behavior is rewarded with a move up to a special camp where the detainees sleep on cots in communal bays and spend hours eating and relaxing outside. They're also allowed to trade in orange jumpsuits for white clothing, more traditional in Muslim countries, like the men you see at a distance in this video. We were not allowed to take pictures of the detainees' faces or speak to them during our visit. But the monotony of day-to-day -day life is broken regularly by visits to interrogation rooms like this one. Detainees are shackled to the floor through hooks like this and watched on closed-circuit TV. Conversations with American interrogators have yielded information on the location, funding, and training of terrorist cells around the world. Part of our mission here is collecting intelligence uh, that can serve our government in a global war on terror. Anything that we can provide that will help people on the other side of the world uh, execute the missions they've been assigned is what we're after. For some of the detainees, the long journey through the camps process here at Guantanamo will end in this commission chamber, essentially a military courtroom. Seven high-ranking officers will sit behind this table, and as the world watches, they'll decide the next chapter in journeys that began on the other side of the world. Currently, six detainees spend their days in special cells like this one, awaiting their turn to appear before the commission. They're visited regularly by their attorneys, most of whom are U.S. military lawyers provided to defend them. So it is your duty to zealously defend your client. No matter who they are. No matter who they are. Others could be released back to their home countries if U.S. military authorities determine they have no information that will help in the war on terror. But for now, life continues behind the razor wire at Guantanamo Bay, far from the Afghan battlefields where these men began their time in American custody. Michael Jordan, WSAV News 3, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. The first thing that surprises most visitors to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, is that this part of Cuba is a tropical desert. Tall cactuses reach up toward the blistering sun. The brown landscape stretches out as far as the eye can see. All around Guantanamo Bay are reminders of the Cold War tensions that existed years ago between Cuban and American forces. Here you see a row of razor wire marking the line of defense against Cuban attack. An old concrete tower was designed to explode and fall down if Cuban forces were coming down the road. And as a last-ditch measure, holes in the asphalt where explosives could blow up the roadway. Every day, American troops patrol the fence line on the edge of no man's land. Loafing around here, making sure there is no enemy trying to come across our lines. But it's not Cuban troops the U.S. is worried about. It's Cuban defectors. Anxious for the freedom and economic opportunities America offers, countless Cubans have crossed Castro's minefields and American razor wire to get into Guantanamo Bay. But unless those Cubans can prove they're facing persecution at home, they're sent right back through this passageway known as the Northeast Gate. The Northeast Gate here at Guantanamo Bay is the only spot in the world where you can walk from an American military base into a communist country. And the building to my left, the American base commander, Captain McCoy, meets regularly with his Cuban counterpart. And I've had, it's almost like an out-of-body experience. I'm talking to him, and half the time I'm saying, I can't believe I'm talking to this guy. That Cuban officer, Brigadier General Solar Hernandez, has promised McCoy that Cuba will return any of the detainees from the war on terror who might escape Guantanamo Bay and flee into Cuba. From their vantage points in the surrounding mountains, the Cubans can see 85% of the American base. If they want to take Guantanamo Bay, they could do it in a heartbeat. I mean, they have artillery, they have everything else they need. Uh, but at what price? <laughs> so the uneasy understanding between Cuban and American troops continues as it has here since Fidel Castro seized power in the late 1950s.